Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief introduction to bond duration. And to show you bond duration, I'm using a very simple bond instrument. That's the zero coupon bond. And so my assumptions are it has a face value of $100 and a maturity of 30 years. And what that means is, as a zero coupon bond, it pays no coupons until it is redeemed at maturity for the face value. To the right, in blue, the blue line plots the price yield relationship. So this is the classic bond plot for this zero coupon bond. I picked a long maturity to highlight the curvature of the bond. What we've got with the blue line is a plot of the price of the bond on the y-axis against the yield to maturity on the x-axis. And you can see this is a classic relationship because as the yield increases, that's as we move to the right on the x-axis, the price of the bond is decreasing and vice versa. Now in lower left are the actual points on this curve such that, for example, here if I highlight the 4% yield, the price of the zero coupon bond is about $30. That's this point right here, 4% yield corresponds to $30 price. And you can see this formula here for the zero coupon bond is very simple and elegant. I'm assuming continuous compounding. So it's the face value of the bond multiplied by the exponential function of the negative rate times the t, which is t is the number of years to maturity. So really all we're doing is discounting the face value continuously at this rate, in this case 4%, over a number of years. Now in green, I've plotted a duration line or a line based on duration. And now duration can be a little tricky because there are a few different ways to look at it. The two best ways to look at it, in my opinion, are first as a weighted average maturity of the bond. So this is the weighted average number of years to receipt of the cash flow. In the case of the zero coupon bond, this duration is 30 years, and we can call that the Macaulay duration for 30 years. The other way, perhaps better, is the modified duration, where duration is really the sensitivity of the bond price to changes in the yield. Why is that so important to us? Well, in risk, it's important to us because we have the bond instrument. It has a value given by its price. That value is sensitive to perhaps several factors, but to one factor more than any other. It's to changes in the yield. So our underlying risk factor is changes in the yield. We are interested in sensitivity because it is the, the price is sensitive to the changes in the yield. And so this green line is based on duration and gives us a linear approximation of the change in the bond price for a change in yield. Or in other words, what happens to my y-axis, how much change in the y-axis, which is price, for a change in yield, which is the x-axis. And so at that 4%, the plot of my duration line you can see is linear against the actual bond price yield plot, which is nonlinear. So it is really the tangent to the price yield curve at that point and it's a line it's a it's a linear approximation so if we look at this line at four percent I'll go up here the duration is actually negative 28 and what does that mean well it means that for a one percent change in yield let's say we the yield goes down by 1% from 4% to 3%. A, t a duration of negative 28 means that if we use this line as an estimate, we expect the price of the bond to increase by 28%. So that duration is really an elasticity measure. And again, based on this linear approximation first derivative. So you, you can see my duration in that case at 4% was negative 28. Again, meaning a 1% change in yield 
corresponds to a 28% change in the price of the bond. Now, my actual change in this case was is $30. And so you can see that is reflected in the graph. The duration tells us if we move up the line or down the line, we'll get to some point. And you can see because one is linear and one is nonlinear, the linear is always going to underestimate the actual price change. And at 4%, this happens to us. The actual change is more like 30%. And so for that reason, we say duration is a linear approximation best estimate. It's also, by the way, not quite the slope of the curve. The slope of the curve, in this case, is actually about negative 868. And the slope of the curve is the dollar duration. So if I go to the yield here, I'll change this from 4% to 5% and you can watch the graph. You can see now my line is, is still the tangent but it's the tangent at 5% and you can see my duration which is really my modified duration is about negative 28 and I'll go up to well I'll go down to 3% and in this case the duration changes again and at 3% our duration is negative 29 and you'll notice it's very close to the maturity. So that's because we have a zero coupon bond. We have no coupons in the interim. So the Macaulay duration is going to equal 30 years because 30 years is the weighted average maturity of the bond. And then our modified duration shown here is going to be only slightly less. But as I've said, we could look at that as the weighted average maturity or time until receipt of the cash flows. But a slightly better way to look at that is in terms of elasticity. If the yield changes by 1%, we expect the price, we estimate, we approximate the price to change by 29%. So that's a brief introduction to uh, duration for a zero coupon bond. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thank you for your time.